Hey guys, I realize this is like a super close up, but I just wanted to pop on real quick before the video starts and tell you that no, this is not a sponsored video and none of the links that I provide below for you are affiliate links. I just really like the new Distress Oxides and wanted to share some techniques with you. So let's get into it. Alrighty guys, we are playing with some Distress Stains today. I have four colors, Broken China, Wilted Violet, Cracked Pistachio, and Worn Lipstick. So, what I did was I pushed the ink pad onto my nonstick craft sheet and I sprayed a little water on top of it. This is a technique that I learned by watching the Tim Holtz demos from CHA. You'll see that third one that I put in there, I dragged it through which made it gray. The other ones, you just want to drag it through one color at a time in different spots or push it on the top. Otherwise, you'll mix the colors together and get mud. So in between layers, you want to dry this and what gives you the oxidized effect is adding a little bit of water to it over the top. So you did add water when after you put it on your craft sheet. That's just to get um, the ink movable so you can work with it. And you just want to create little spritzes of water over the top during each layer to get that extra oxidized effect. Now you do have to push harder on the oxide ink pads to get the ink out than you do on a regular ink pad. I don't know why, it might just be the nature of it, but that's something to keep in mind. If you feel like you aren't getting enough ink on your craft sheet, try just pushing on the pad a little harder. So. This technique obviously isn't that hard. It's super easy. It's a lot of fun. You can put literally as many layers as you want to and uh, you can just keep adding layers upon layers. Like I said, um, it doesn't work very well if you swipe it through, but if you just kind of push the tag on the top and put the color in the different areas that you want it, you get some really cool effects. And I'll show you close-ups of all the different tags after we're done. So I'm just working on several different tags at a time. Obviously you don't have to work on tags, you can work on something else, but I feel like this is a really easy way uh, to show you guys the different effects and stuff. I have not tried it on um, Tomoe rubber paper or anything like that. I have stamped with it on pretty much all of my paper and it works fine, but I haven't tried this particular technique with it. Where did I go? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know where I went. So yeah, this is basically, like I said, the technique. Um, I did try embossing with it, which you will see in a little bit, and that did work, which was super cool. Um, obviously the hardest part really is knowing when to stop, but I really like that you can build the layers on top of each other because um, of the opaqueness. They don't all blend together. You can actually see like the blue on top of the purple and stuff like that whereas if you did that with a normal ink pad it wouldn't look so good because purple is usually darker than the blue but yeah so after this we're gonna make a uh, tag make a tag with one of the tags yeah but you know what I mean I put a little too much blue on the craft sheet so I was just trying to use it up so my tags ended up more blue than I thought they would but that's okay and then here I'm just running the string of the tag through the ink, little bit of ink that's left on my craft sheet just to color it a little bit and give it a little extra oomph. Now here's the close up of all the tags 
you can see all the different layers and the different layers of oxidization. I just think it's super cool. You can get a really vibrant but grungy look at the same time, which is awesome. I also really like that it looks like water a lot of the time, especially when you use the Broken China and the Cracked Pistachio together, especially because I like mermaids, so that's going to be a lot of fun to use with that. This would be cool as um, little tags on gifts or making cards for people. Um, you could even do like name places at a wedding. That would be kind of cool. Um, and obviously I'm just gonna put these in my journal because that's what I do. But yeah, look at that. Oh, it just looks so cool. So they run about $5 a pad, but you can get the re-inkers for them. Um, and you get a lot of pigment in each pad. I've never used up a pad of Tim Holtz's that I've had. So I would highly recommend investing in them if you like to play with your inks like this. Um, I only got four colors out of the 12 because they I'm not super into browns and dark greens. And that's kind of what the rest of them are. I think there was a yellow and an orange as well so you really can't there's something for everybody um here is where i tried the embossing so i noticed that it takes a little while to dry if you're just stamping with them so i was hoping that i could emboss clear embossing powder over the pink and it would stay pink and it kind of did obviously it looks a little funny because i did it on black but yeah It did work, which was super cool. So I just cut that out that I stamped the Own Your Dreams. And I'm just going to play around with this tag. I try to add some of the ribbon and I add another tag to it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let you guys watch for a little bit and I'll be back. So I just decided to add some brads. I finally got my first brads the other day. I found them at Michael's. I, I had never been able to find them there before. Um, I just put packing tape on the back to hold that down. But yeah, so I was super excited, especially when I found these star ones because I love stars. And I decided just to take a little bit of the antique bronze paint from Tim Holtz and color um, Put some on top of the stars to kind of bronze it up a little and then I put some tea dye Tim Holtz regular distress stain all around the edges just to give it kind of a more cohesive look and I decided to add a third star there with another brad and just put the paint over that so yeah I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I know obviously I didn't offer a lot of techniques. I'm sure there's more that you can do with the distress stains, but this is just what I've done with it so far. I think they're a lot of fun, um, and I hope this inspires you to try them out if you have not already and already own them, because I know some of you buy things and then never use them, which is really sad. If you're going to spend the money, you might as well use it, right? 
so yeah if you have any questions at all just go ahead and leave them in the description box below for me and don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not so that you don't miss any future videos and i will catch you guys in my next one take care bye bye